I love the movie Upstream Color. It is a beautiful movie, although a little bit hard to understand, which is why I'm making this video. But it's essentially about flawed and broken people, and I can totally relate to that. Because when I'm not making silly videos, I'm usually just listening to sad music and crying all the time. But I don't think people want to watch videos of me crying and listening to sad music, unless that's like a thing or something. But I don't think it is. So, on to the explanation! By the way, spoilers, so if you're planning on watching this movie, you might want to watch the movie before you see the rest of this video. Um, anyway. The movie opens up with a bunch of people cultivating some sort of blue orchid. Henceforth, I'm representing the cultivators of blue orchids as a pitcher of ice-cold water, uh, mostly because I couldn't find a better image of them in the trailer, but hopefully you'll get the idea. So, they're doing stuff with the orchid, and then they get some sort of worm out of it, and then they take the worm and the orchid, and they do some stuff, and then they end up with this sort of drug. It's not really all that important how they get the drug, but there are two very interesting properties of the drug. Number one, anybody who uses the drug becomes highly susceptible to suggestion, and number two, anybody who shares the same worm drug worm ends up becoming somehow psychically linked. This becomes important later on. So now the gang has this really powerful drug and one of them takes this drug and tries to find an unsuspecting victim to give it to. And then he runs into Chris, forces her to take the worm, blah 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 blah, BAM! And this is where the pitcher of ice water scene comes in. So now Chris is under the influence of the drug and so she'll basically do whatever the guy tells her to do. Boy, that would be really handy, wouldn't it? So Chris, under the influence of the drug, will basically do whatever she's told to do. And the thief takes the opportunity to tell her to do a bunch of weird stuff like, oh, copy out the entire contents of On Walden Pond and make some chains and, I don't know, all this other weird stuff. Uh, but mostly, uh, he tells her to empty out her bank account and give him all the money. After the thief steals all of her money, Chris is left alone in her apartment. Then she starts freaking out because she realizes she's got some sort of worm inside of her and she can't get rid of it. She tries cutting it out. It doesn't work out so well. But fortunately, she's psychically linked to the sampler, the guy who's in control of all the drugs, the worms, the gangs, etc. And so she goes and psychically finds her way over to him and then the sampler is like, oh yeah, you've got the worm inside of you. Here, let me take care of that. So then the sampler goes and takes the worm out of Chris puts it inside of this pig. Oh wait, this is gonna get complicated. Okay, here's the important thing about the pigs. So whenever a human ends up taking this worm drug type thing, and then that worm gets kind of transferred over to the pig, these people are now psychically linked. So that means that whatever happens to Chris ends up happening to the Chris pig as well. And furthermore, if somebody were to observe the Chris pig, they would kind of have an idea of what the actual Chris is doing. This becomes important later on. Back to Chris, she now wakes up and then realizes, hey, some stuff happened. I don't really know what happened because I've got all these cuts on my body and stuff is missing from my apartment. She calls her job and they're like, hey, you haven't been around in a week so you're fired. And then she tries buying stuff and they're like, hey, you have no money. And she's like, what? What happened to all my bank accounts and everything and all that stuff that I had? I don't know. And so Chris might have ended up spending the rest of her life in this horrible fugue state, not really understanding what was going on. But fortunately, Jeff finds her and Jeff realizes, hey, there's something messed up about Chris. In the same way that, hey, there's something messed up about Jeff. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the sampler is busy trying to create this musical masterpiece that has something to do with the drugs, the worms, something, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. He notices that the Jeff pig and the Chris pig are spending an awful lot of time together. As an aside, all those scenes where it looks like the sampler is looking at these people and getting really close to them but not really being noticed, it's not really him being there in person. What it is is actually the sampler is looking at the pigs that represent those people. And he's like, oh, hey, something's going on. And so he knows what's going on in the actual world with the humans because he's observing it with the pigs in his farm. So that's kind of a thing about symbolism or something. It's not actually him teleporting back and forth and being invisible or anything like that. That's just this psychic link thing. So back to Chris and Jeff. They're both starting to fall in love. All this wonderful happy stuff is happening. Although there are some side effects of the drug. Um, for example, they both have these messed up memories and they're both highly suggestible. So that means that whenever they start talking about their childhoods, they start getting mixed up about whose is whose and they start doing all these weird things and all that stuff. But you know, for the most part, it's pretty good. Back at the ranch, the sampler starts seeing these pigs fall in love, and then he realizes, oh, that means the humans are falling in love. And then the pig gets pregnant. And then that means that, oh, they're gonna be like having family and then being healthy and leading productive lives. And if they're healthy, they might start remembering things, which could lead them back to the sampler. And he's like, oh no, this is not a good thing. So that means I'm gonna have to take care of these little baby piglets, which is why he kills those little piglets. So back to Chris and Jeff, 
Well, Chris wasn't actually pregnant or anything like that, but she did have this psychic link to this pig, and the pig just went through this traumatic thing of losing all of its babies and all this other stuff. So then she starts freaking out, and he starts freaking out, bad things start happening, and then she goes even deeper into a fugue state. And this is how we end up finding Chris swimming back and forth in a pool, picking rocks off the ground, and then reciting pieces from Henry David Thoreau's Walden. And this is probably where she would have just ended up for the rest of her life, except that this time she has Jeff looking after her. And Jeff notices, hey, wait, she's saying a bunch of stuff that doesn't sound completely random. Let me try writing some of this down. And so he starts writing it down and then realizes, oh, there's something to all of this. And then they start doing some research and eventually they find a copy of Walden and they're like, oh my gosh, this is actually a real book. And then she's like, oh wait, I'm starting to remember stuff. And he's like, oh wait, I'm starting to remember some stuff too. So the whole time the sampler is actually observing them trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Well, now, he's not actually in the room with them. What he's actually doing is he's looking at the pigs that represent these two and trying to figure out what's going on. So there's no way that they can actually see him or anything like that. But then Chris turns to look at him. And the sampler is like, oh my god, what's happening? What's happening is that Chris has decided to kick ass and chew bubblegum. And she's all out of bubblegum. So she tracks down the sampler, shoots him, bam, he's dead. And then she goes and finds a pig farm and then frees all the pig. Well, doesn't free them, but then lets them go free range and stuff. And then she finds the dossiers on all the other people that have been drugged over the years. And then they find each other, send packages of Walden to all those people and then realize what's going on to them. And then they gather all the people. They start this happy pig farm and then blah, blah, blah. Orchids stop growing and then the end of the cycle and all this stuff. Happy pigs and everybody lives happily ever after. The end. So that's my basic explanation for the movie. There were these orchids, and then these worms, fled to these drugged up people, and then these psychic pigs, and then the cycle repeats again with more orchids and more worms, and then another drugged up person. But eventually two of these drugged up people ended up finding each other, falling in love, and then fixing all the problems they had, and uh, ending the cycle. So yeah, that was it for anyways, my take on Upstream Color. Hope you enjoyed it.